All right, guys. So today we're gonna check out a pair of truly wireless earbuds that a lot of you have wanted me to check out on the channel for quite a while. Um, it's the Habit G1s. They come in at $70, and there's also a Pro Edition that comes in at $79. Now, the pair we're gonna look at is the regular Habit G1s. So let's go ahead and start with the fact that these have Bluetooth 5.0, which usually means a stable connection and zero to no lag when it comes to watching videos. These, actually, I experienced the opposite. They easily drop connection, and I experience lag with Netflix, YouTube, no matter what video type service you're using. It just doesn't matter, and it's a noticeable lag. Damn you! Wanna fight, huh? These are IPX5 water resistant, so it's one of those you can wear while doing any kind of activities, and as long as they're not being submerged into water, they're gonna be okay. Now inside the box, you get two additional silicone ear tips and two additional silicone ear hooks. Now the ear hooks are really important in these because of the bulkier design. It keeps them a little more balanced and allows you to keep that good seal the whole time, which I did not have an issue with. Now also in the box is micro USB, which again, at this point, why are companies still using that? Battery life on the earbuds, it says three and a half hours. Honestly, I got closer to three. Now, battery life, that is like at the low end of the spectrum. Um, although the case will give you around 20 hours total, and if you do pick the earbuds up and they are dead, a 20 minute charge will get you an hour's worth of use. Now that's important because this is the other issue. The earbuds, the way that they go into the case, you, the little pin connectors line up so that they're able to charge. This doesn't happen as easy as it should. You actually have to put them in the case, kind of wiggle to make sure they line up. Even though they click, you think that it already lined up, but it doesn't. And you have to kind of push down and get it just right to be able to close the case. Now, I've seen other reviewers that had this issue. Also, my buddy at El Jefe Reviews had the same issue as well. So it's not just my pair, it's not a defective pair this easily happens. So what that causes is one, it stays connected to your phone. Two, it's not charging. So when you go to take them out of the case, nine times out of 10, they're gonna be dead. They just didn't charge the whole time and that's gonna be very frustrating. Now, speaking of the earbuds, both of them can be used individually. Now, if you have them both in your ear and you take a phone call, you're only gonna be able to hear the phone call out of one ear. These also have the button controls instead of the touch controls, and you're able to control everything but volume. Now, these do work with smart assistants, so you can summon your smart assistant to be able to change your volume, but there's a lot of cases and situations where you're just not gonna wanna do that. So you're going to have to pull out your phone to be able to control volume most of the time. Now, as far as the microphone for phone calls, it does a decent job, but you guys can be a judge by listening to the test here. All right, guys, so here is a test of the Habit G1 microphone. I'm also playing like a busier background noise so that you can hear what a phone call would sound like if you're in a restaurant. So now let's talk about the sound because even those other issues, even though some of them are big issues, if these sound amazing, I can sometimes deal with that. I can sometimes work around trying to get the earbuds to fit or deal with some of the other things if these sound great. And they don't. They, they just don't. They are bass heavy, which is usually fun. I'm a bass head, but they're bass heavy to the point where most genres of music, it just kills the mids and the highs. They're not a bright sounding pair. They are very warm, almost too thick at times to where, at least for me, it's not enjoyable most of the time. Now, if it's a cleaner genre, more geared towards like easy listening or clarity, then they're fine because there's no bass that's coming in rolling in over everything else. But like metal with a lot of things going on, these things just sound congested, they sound narrow, the sound imaging just doesn't sound open, the sound stage is not very wide. It's just a very blah pair of truly wireless earbuds. I, you know, and at $70, there's so many good competitors that it's hard to recommend these. Now, if you are interested in the Pro Edition, some of the differences are the Pro is actually smaller and lighter. Those have IPX6 waterproof, so they're completely waterproof. They improve the Bluetooth to BLE, which you know is cutting out on the dropouts and the lag issues. 
And then it's noise canceling for phone calls where you can also hear phone calls in both ears. But the big improvement is they added the touch controls instead of using the physical button. So if you are interested in these, I would go with the Pro Edition before going with the normal one, especially considering there's only like a $9 difference. But another product I do want to tell you guys about, and another one to me that's just night and day compared to the G1, is the Havit E5. Packaging wise, you can see they look almost identical. The speaker still has that hook, which for a speaker is really convenient because throwing it onto a bag, or even if you're out riding your bike, you can loop this around your handlebars it makes it really convenient to just take to the beach or the pool or wherever. Also the fact that it's IPX7 waterproof, meaning you can pretty much throw these things in the mud and they're still gonna play. Now battery life is 30 hours on the speaker. Um, it has a 4,000 milliamp battery, which also allows you to plug in your phone into the speaker to be able to charge your phone. So if you're out and about and using your phone for audio, you can plug it into the speaker so that it's not killing your battery. Also, as far as inputs go, there's a micro SD card slot. So if you wanna go somewhere and not have your phone on you, load your SD card up with music and just throw it into the speaker. And if you purchase two of these, you're able to connect them to get a stereo sound as well. The surprising thing about the speaker is it's only 50 bucks. And as far as sound goes, like it beats the Bose SoundLink Micro, and it even to me beats the JBL Flip 4. And this is coming out of a pretty tiny speaker, even though it has substantial weight, but that is because of the battery. Sound wise, it's loud, it's robust, it's punchy, but it's clear. It's so much different than the Havit G1. So it just goes to show you, even judging things by a company name, you probably shouldn't do that because both of these are from the same company, giving you two completely different experiences. So I highly recommend the Havit E5, and I definitely don't recommend the Havit G1. But guys, that's my video on these two Havit products. Um, thank you guys so much for checking out this video. Thank you so much for checking out all the other videos. And as always, make sure to stay tuned for more.